must play NES games, man. There's a lot of them out there, but one that is really close to me and I play all the time is Wampum. I have a lot of fond memories of this game. It was put out by Jalico back in 1991 on the NES. It did come out several months prior in Japan on the Famicom, but it was known as Sayuki World 2 Evil Spirit of Heaven. Kind of a strange choice here. So when it came to North America, they redid some of the sprites, a little bit of the music, and just changed the theme overall. To me, I don't really understand why they had to do that. Removing any, you know, elements of Journey to the West just kind of seems strange. Now you have to play as a little Native American boy named Soaring Eagle where he has to prove himself, I guess, is what the point is. I mean, there's no dialogue in this game. There's no story elements that you have to read. So I kind of find that strange that they took one adaptation and changed it to something else. Would have it really have mattered if they kept that Journey to the West theme initially in the US for this? I I'm not sure. Was there some kind of reason they couldn't do it? But regardless, it's still an awesome game either way you play it. So today, I'm playing through it on the Retro USB AVS. I am using the EverDrive N8 Pro flash card. I do have the original cartridge as well, but you know one thing with these uh, newer flash cards is save states. But mind you, my playthrough of this game, I only used save states once and I never actually had to use it, but I did save at the final boss right before entering that. That's one of the great things with modern technology, save states, right? But the cool thing with this game is, since I've played it so much, I'm pretty damn familiar when I pick it up each year. You know, I play through it maybe once or twice a year. So I'm pretty familiar and I can breeze fairly quickly through it. But I always do a save state if I'm playing this way or way where I can save the game. I always save at that last boss just in case because the journey between the beginning of the game all the way to the final boss is pretty easy for the most part. But once you get to that final boss, if you're not prepared, you can be screwed and then just stuck and you have to have like flawless performance to beat his ass. And that's not really uh, my skill level there, you know what I mean? But I have the strategy down. And if you wanna see how to defeat the final boss and play through the game, you could watch through the whole video here. I'm not gonna talk through the whole thing, uh, I'll stop at some point and then you can continue on if you like, right? Uh, you can fast forward through type of thing. So in this game, it, it's kind of interesting. You have a bunch of different items like uh, little spearheads that makes your attack a little more powerful. You have invincibility for a moment, like a little headdress type thing where you take less damage. And then there are these gourds that you can get after defeating enemies, right? So if you press select, on the controller, it'll tell you how many are left before you level up. So essentially, you gain more hearts on your life bar by, you know, collecting those gourds. So one of my strategies in this game is there's a couple places where I do grind it out and kind of, you know, just refight enemies over and over again to build up my hearts. And then another item that you can get are these magic potions, like life potion type things, that once your hearts are depleted, the little energy tank, I guess I could say, refills your hearts completely and you're good to go. So that's one thing with this game is you can grind it out, respawn the enemies. They do respawn, which I don't think is a big issue in this game. It, you know, some games like the enemies just continually respawn and you're screwed. This one, you just got to kind of trigger them respawning by going back and forth on the screen. So not a huge issue. Now this game will seem very familiar uh, if you're accustomed to playing like Mega Man, though it's not exactly like Mega Man, but you do have eight stages that you play through, and when you defeat a boss, you get his, like, weapon. You get his item. Now, I find my one criticism with this game is that the items are really, the weapons anyway, that you get from the bosses are really underutilized. You don't really need them, and some of them I don't even use at all in the game because they're just, there's no reason to. The main ones that I use is going to be the flame attack, or the flame spear, I'm not sure what it's called. And then there's a spinny one that doesn't have much of a reach, but it could take care of like the boulders that fly at you, the little mushroom dudes that come at you in like one hit, the little doll looking robot guys that run at you. You'll kill them fairly easily with that item. And then some bosses are more impervious to, you know, the flame, like the moth butterfly boss that you'll see at one point. Uh, takes more damage that way. Some of the bosses just take more damage from the regular spearhead or the little spinning spear. All the other items really don't do anything until you've beat all the stages and you go to the final level. Then you get like this death blow 
type of item in the uh, item select, which you press start to cycle through the items, it's a, a little dragon icon that you will collect. And that thing is a, a, a neat item. You wouldn't really want to use it until you get to the final stage. Uh, I believe it's called the Death Branch is, is what it is. So it'll destroy every enemy that is like there, right? And it sucks because it takes away life from you. So you really don't want to use it. It's an extremely high powered item, but you don't want to use it until you get to the final boss. Now, when you get to the final boss, I do grind it out and make sure I have enough hearts and enough potions to defeat him because the only way I could defeat the final boss is with that death branch item that slowly kills me. So I gotta make sure I can, you know, replenish my hearts. But definitely this game with that sequence of getting an item from a boss, it seems very reminiscent of like Mega Man. But I found with this game, just playing the game clockwise through the stages is good enough for me. Like I don't really see too much in the point of trying to strategize what item to get before you go fight a boss. If you just go in that natural sequence, you should be fine for the most part. Uh, so that that's kind of a, a criticism as well as, you know, the items just, eh, I mean, they could have been of more use, I guess. It's a simple game. It's a fun game. I absolutely love this one. I had it way back in the day. And a long while back, I wound up like driving out like an hour and a half to somebody off of Craigslist who had like a bundle of NES games and there was only one of them I wanted, which was Wampum. He had a bunch of other ones. It was like, I'll drive this hour something drive to go get Wampum. And it was before prices started going crazy. So I wound up getting a pretty good deal on that. But love this game. Definitely recommend playing it any which way you can. Emulate that bitch. Play it on a flash cart. Play it on original, you know, media, whatever you want to do. Save states can come in handy, but like I said, really, if you're... You're okay with just breezing through the game. I play it very sloppy. I take damage. I lose my potions, but then I just grind for them again at the end of the game. Uh, so I wind up not dying at all throughout the game. But really, save states can come in handy if you're not accustomed to the final boss. One other thing, a note I want to point out with this game is if you're fighting a boss and they start to flash red or they turn red, get the hell away from them because they will steal your potion. It's kind of messed up, you know what I'm saying? So be careful with that. But if you want to watch the rest of the gameplay, see how this game flows, watch the rest of the video. I will stop talking now. Uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? So really do appreciate you guys. And with that said, we'll catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye and boom. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank <laughs> you.